close, but not exactly right. But thank you anyways. Um, so I have the pleasure of introducing our first speaker, uh, my coworker and one of my best friends in the field in J.D. O'Brien. So as Tom alluded to, J.D. has been with Indiana Strength now since 2016. And he first originally started with us as a part-time assistant coach where he worked with all the sports that we had here in Indiana. And that's really when I first saw the drive and the passion, the work ethic uh, that obviously has been elevated to a full-time coach. And selfishly, I use JD to bounce ideas uh, back and forth between. And honestly, I steal the majority of his ideas that he throws at me. And it has since made me a better, better coach and a better um, programmer really. So I'm really excited to hear what you have to say now, JD, about how you develop speed uh, with softball. And I know the majority of your other athletes that you coach too. So the floor is yours, sir. Thanks, Kevin. I think I shed a single tear in that. I appreciate the words. Uh, that was an awesome introduction. All right. Um, so pretty much uh, definition of speed, but where this whole thing kind of started was when uh, Ron McKeefrey visited our staff and he asked us a question, what's the Indian strength way? Um, and after the conversation I had with him, I went back to my office and I started thinking about ways that, um, that make what we're doing here at Indiana University unique um, and what makes us different. Uh, when I thought about, you know, all my sports, specifically the softball team, um, the thing that the coaches hound on the thing that we train the most with the team is speed uh, because year in and year out, we are one of the best teams at stealing bases in the country. Um, ever since coach Stanton's been there, we've been top 15 um, every year. We lead the big 10 every year. And it's like, how do I take a team that is already so good at this, uh, this skill or this craft and how do I get them better? Uh, and kind of like looking at field sports, I know that uh, running wise, there's a lot of room for improvement. Because a lot, of the, a lot of the times when, you know, this athlete or these softball athletes come to me day one, um, however they were taught to run at, you know, age six is how they run at age 18. Um, so the, the room for improvement with these athletes is super high. It's just kind of figuring out ways to, uh, creative ways to get them better and to keep doing it that way. Um, and then a lot of this stuff that I have in here is just kind of how, what I take from how I train my track and field sprinters. Because, you know, looking at them, they come in on day one and they're the fastest kids from their perspective states. And I've got to get creative with, you know, just ways that I can make them faster and, and better and to break school records over a four year span. Um, so I want to talk about just two simple tests that I use to develop speed. Um, those two tests being the 20 yard sprint and the single leg power test. Um, both of these tests in the combination is kind of what has built uh, the process that I use to uh, improve the top end speeds of my athletes. And these two tests alone give me a lot of information that I need to know from day one without even having to have a conversation with the athletes that come through. So first, I want to talk about the, the 20 yard sprint. Um, what does it show us? Um, first and foremost, just sprinting in general can be a great movement assessment for the athletes. You can find out a lot about them from, you know, having them take their shoes off and just running on a field, but that's a completely different presentation in, in its own. Um, but what this 20 yard sprint test that shows me, what it shows for me is the trainable qualities that my athletes are missing. So when I look at the 10 yard, when I look at the 20 yard sprint in the hole and I split it into 10 yard and the 20 yard split, what that 10 yard split shows me is a measure of acceleration. Um, and from that I can get, if, you know, if my athlete lacks in this area, you know, maybe they need to take their time to spend on five to 10 yard loaded and under unloaded work, just kind of short sprinting work. And then in the weight room, you know, maybe we need to focus more on power strength movements. If they've got a lower time on that 20 yard sprint, it's a measure of top end speed. So speed wise, maybe I need to work with them on their, you know, their running mechanics, or maybe we need to apply some over speed in their training. In the weight room, maybe we need to add some dynamic or uh, speed type movements to their training. Um, single leg power testing, what does it show us? Um, for me, it monitors my athlete's progress. So it shows improvement in single leg power, peak power um, over time. And a lot of times, or I think, my stick is to say right around 98% of the time, an increase in single leg power equals an, ease, an increase in speed. Um, and the other big kicker it gives me is it shows asymmetry, the difference between the right and left. Um, and this is gold when it comes to improving uh, a sprinter's ability. And the two best ways that I've kind of used to figure out that asymmetry is, you know, VBT equipment at IU, we have elite form or the single leg vertical jump. Um, so kind of calculating this in both ways, if you're a place that has VBT equipment or a place that doesn't, um, there are two ways that I've kind of gone about this. So before we get elite form, I use a single leg vertical jump test. 
So pretty much all it was is we have these just jump mats or you could use a Vertec. It's a single leg jump up in the air. You land on two, you do three jumps off of the left leg, three jumps off the right leg. You average your left, you average your right, right. And then that's what gives you your deficit. Um, or if you've got velocity based tracking systems, I use a split jump exercise. So I have an athlete start with the left leg forward, right leg back. They jump three times on that side. They do the same thing on the right. Um, and then the average of those three is what gives me that asymmetry number. Um, and narrowing down or lessening that asymmetry number, it gives you a real, uh, a real, <clears throat> um, uh, kind of the head approach on where your strength training or your speed training is going. And a lot of times when I talk about asymmetries and narrowing them down, the questions I get from most coaches is just what's considered a significant deficit. I think just the right answer is just anything that's considered a significant deficit because as a strength and conditioning professional, um, our job is to put the best product on the field. So we've got to be constantly working to narrow this down so that our athletes are, uh, they're performing on all cylinders like they're able to do. Um, so pretty much from these two tests, I break it up into two groups. Um, I break it up into my 10 yard split group and my 20 yard split group. Um, and for both of these processes, the testing is biweekly and the program length is two weeks. So if you're in my 10 yard group, which means your 10 yard split is higher than your 20 yard split, you kind of got a different emphasis in, se in season and off season in the weight room. Um, so for those 10 yard people, the speed emphasis for them is going to be in the off season, five to 10 yard weighted acceleration type movements. The weight room emphasis is going to be auto-regulated strength training because a lot of times in the off season, we're just trying to get them stronger and more powerful when they walk in the door. But this group specifically is going to have a lot of loaded plyometric movements, um, dumbbell loaded jumps, med ball work. And then we're also going to look at their asymmetry need. Um, what do we need to work on with our unilateral work between the right and the left? And they need extra sets or reps on one side compared to the other. In season, it looks a little bit differently. We're still going to focus on that speed emphasis of the five to 10 yard acceleration, but this time it's going to be unloaded because we're getting all kinds of repetitions within the sport that we're competing in. Um, the weight room emphasis kind of gets narrowed down a little bit more. Um, our strength training, if we're using velocity based movements, we're, we kind of want to work on strength and power. So the movement speeds of those movements are going to be anywhere between 0.4 meters per second and 6.5 meters per second. But if you're somewhere that doesn't have that, um, a good ballpark range would be between that 70 and 90% um, percentage range. Um, and then this group's going to use low volume of unloaded pyrometric movements, and we're still working on that, that asymmetry deficit between the right and the left. My 20-yard group, so this is the group of your 20-yard splits higher, the testing and the program length is the same, it's going to look a little bit different. So if we're in the off-season, um, the big emphasis speed-wise is going to be overspeed, running form, uh, the weight training is going to be the regulated strength training. And then they're going to do a lot of unloaded reactive plyometric movements. Um, so things like hurdle hops to box jumps, reverse jumps, um, things of that nature, while it's still addressing that asymmetry need. Um, Preseason, in season, their speed emphasis is going to be over speed runs. And I like to do these because it still, you know, trains that stimulus at a pretty high level. Uh, but it gets, it's, it's a lot of bang for its buck in terms of the quality that, that they provide. Um, we do a very low volume of those, anywhere from like five to six reps a session. And then the weight room emphasis for them is going to be that, that strength, that speed or strength speed type of area. So if you're looking at it from a velocity parameter, the barbell movements that they're doing are going to be anywhere from 0.8 meters per second to 1.0 meters per second. But if you don't have the means to do that, anywhere from 35 to 60 percent is a good place to be. Um, this group's going to do a lot of band assisted plyometrics to kind of mimic the uh, dynamic of sport. Um, and then also we're going to work on that asymmetry need um, and right to left. So kind of like looking at this, my programming as a whole for this group, is it's ever changing because our athletes are ever training, changing. So if you're looking at the span of 12 weeks, you can have some athletes that are spending 10 weeks in that 10 yard split group in the last two weeks in that 20 yard split group. You'll see people that are going two and two throughout a whole semester, or you'll see people that go four and four, but for everyone, it's different. For everyone, it's for everyone, it's unique, and for everyone, it's individualized based on their needs and their goals. So pretty much putting it all together, you've got your 20-yard split test. What your 20-yard split test can tell you is the speed training trait you need to train, either acceleration or top-end speed. You've got your weight training, so that's going to either tell you uh, if your athlete needs to work on more power or strength movements or speed or speed strength type movements. Um, and from there, you've got single leg power testing. What that's going to tell you is your progress over time. Um, it's going to answer the questions whether or not my athletes are improving by training this way and the single leg asymmetry and always working to, to make that number lower because the lower is the better. Um, and then right here is just an example of, 
uh, two athletes and uh, the results that we've seen with this. This was test day was first day on campus this semester and test Z was the last training session that we had before COVID cut their season short. Uh, so as you can see here, um, increasing that single leg power, working on that asymmetry and training those traits in the weight room will lead to faster athletes, not only faster athletes, but more consistently fast athletes. Um, on here, I've got my contact information. Um, feel free to reach out to me, give me feedback. I like to talk shop. I want to know if you thought this was an idiotic idea or if you thought this was a brain busting idea or whatever it may be. Um, I love feedback no matter what it is. Um, I love collaboration. And I love talking. So feel free to reach out to me on any of these facets. Um, I want to thank the strength staff for letting me do this today. And I appreciate everybody for uh, listening to my talk. Well, JD, uh, I, I think it was a great idea and uh, we want to hear about it more. Um, but luckily, I get to hang out with you every day here soon, so we do get to hear about it more. And yeah, if you if you got questions about VBT technology, things of that nature, this this kid lives it, man, and he does. the The kids buy into it so much, and the coaches buy into it that it's just an awesome um, experience having him on the staff. And if you get a chance, reach out because he's he's all about it. Um, he'll he'll reach out and he'll uh, he'll tell you everything he knows, and he has, he has questions too. So um, JD, great job, and. Uh, if you get a chance, go ahead and reach out to him. But